What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, party people? Boy, Coach D. Brown here, man, live and direct. It is Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, man. I know everybody probably out there shopping, catching them good sales, fighting over TVs, fighting over whatever. I don't get it. I never will. But to each his own, right? I uh, <laughs> I know that uh, today is one of those days, man, you kind of chilling around the house, stomach probably hurting a little bit from one of them, you know, or you can eat type atmospheres you was in yesterday. I know that the it was good to see fam and hang around and catch up and man, I, you know, I just love Thanksgiving, man. It's just one of those times, man, to get to reflect. You know, I think about moms ain't being around, man, but I know she loved it. But you know, the time passes. I ain't gonna get sombo and nothing like that. But I just hope everybody out there had a great, great Thanksgiving. All right. The uh, the responses, man, to the other day, the other day's message, man. You know, I kind of kept it 100 with you guys, man. I brought it back and told you, you know, I just kind of, you know, I wanted you guys to, you know, get a glimpse in how I, you know, was feeling that particular day, and you know, I just know those type of messages, you know, hit home with you guys, and you know, because I want to, you know, I'm not perfect, perfect at all, but. Um, you know, from from my disappointments and mistakes, I I try to encourage the next group crop of kids coming up, man, and letting them know, like, hey, don't make the same mistakes that I have, you know. And, uh, and that's why I think that it resonates with a lot of people, man. So today's message, right, real smooth, you know what I'm saying? Don't know what's up, baby. What's going on, cuzzo? So it's uh today's one of those messages, man, that I wanted to talk about was being very coachable, man. You gotta be coachable in this game of baseball to succeed, right? And that's in life in general, but basically, you know, we're talking about this ball. I had a conversation earlier, right? I was talking to my daughter, and she was telling me about a couple of kids in her tennis program that are struggling with, you know, just being coached and talking crazy to the coaches and making them all run. And, you know, I was just, I, I get her perspective on it and I ask how she feel about that and she tells me how she gets upset that, you know, a couple of uh, kids in her program and her group, you know, doesn't listen and it causes her to run extra laps and sprints and everything and basically I laugh because certain times with her, she's stubborn sometimes and doesn't and don't want to listen and, you know, when I tell her that, she kind of looked crazy and like, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. And it got me thinking about the message today. And I was like, man, you know, how many, how many uncoachable kids that I have come come across already? And I know I'm going to come across more. And what they fail to, you know, what they fail to realize is that these coaches out here, it don't matter if your dad on your coach or your high school coach or your professional coach or anybody that's out here that's truly out there trying to help you, they got their best, you know, they got your best interest at heart, meaning you being the player. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Danny? You know what I'm saying? You have to, as kids, as players, you may not have to agree what they're saying, but how you interact, how you take criticism as a youngster will basically show you and tell you how you're going to take criticism as you get older. If you get sensitive about things that's being said to you with the intentions of trying to help you and you don't want to listen or you have give a half-hearted effort on what you're being coached, that's going to translate in the real world. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Julie? That's going to translate in the real world. You're going to get to a point where you ain't going to be, because we all get told things that we don't want to hear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Many of times. But it's probably during those times where you learn the most. And sometimes, especially when it comes to coaches, when they're telling you things, a lot of it is always testing. I keep saying this. I, talk, I keep harping on this. They're trying to get into your brain. They're trying to understand how they're able to communicate with you. Are you going to take what they're saying 
and A, give a full effort on what they're saying and try it, and, and try it before so many kids, especially that have no, no real qualification to poo poo any message that a, co a coach gives to them. But they're automatically, because it ain't something that they feel is right or they feel like they don't want to hear, they just poo poo it. And they don't even like really try and give a, and they give a half hearted effort. And the sad part about it, that stuff continues to translate the older they get. We all get told things that we don't want to do. We all get criticized on many things. Right? I get criticized on the talks that I have sometimes. I, you know, I get criticized on multiple, multiple things across the board that I don't get why I'm getting criticized with it. But I take it, and if and if it's a healthy message, I take it to heart. Now, when you got an old, an elder, you know, a, a coach talking, you know, to a player, there is no real room for discussion. Like, you know, you're being told what to do, and then it's up to you as a, as a, as the player, to take that information, absorb it, and apply it to your game, ASAP. No questions asked, no nothing, right? And and if you have a little dispute of what you're being asked, it's a way to do it. But it's always after, it's always after you at least give it a go. So many times these kids, man. Pierre, what's up, baby? Happy Thanksgiving to you. Hey, Aaron. So many kids poo-poo this, man. They poo-poo the, you know, the, a coach, and I say poo-poo and it's a lighthearted. They don't even try and they do it with an attitude and... <laughs> And it, and it basically is like, hey, I'm going to do it, but I ain't going to do it with no full effort. See, see, it don't work. And what all they're doing is it's messing up a, a, a real cool relationship, man, because I, and I, I was hard-headed at times, no doubt about it. But it's been times in the past, these coaches, especially with all the thousands of dollars that you're either paying or playing for an organization, and then especially when it comes to the recruiting process, these are your advocates. These are your best, they're supposed to be your cheerleaders. Right? They are supposed to be your cheerleaders. But what they're going to say to a college coach, what do you really believe that they're going to say if they know wholeheartedly that this guy, don't, when I'm telling them stuff, he doesn't listen, he's not trying to hear what he's, you know, what I'm saying to him. You know, he may not flat out tell the recruiter or scout that, but the scout can read between the lines. And that guy, that, and that coach has to tell the truth. His name is on the line. As much as he wants this guy, this kid to really succeed, he has to tell the truth because his, his word is his bond. And too many times I see these kids out here, man, that just don't understand, like, yo, this, this coach can either make you or almost break you. They don't look at it like that. They look at, oh, our coach is picking on me, or our coach is, he ain't, he ain't, you know what I'm saying, looking out for me. He ain't this and that. And I hear it on my side, man. I be hearing, seeing talented kids, man, and I be like, yo, y you don't even know, man, just the way you acting and listening and not listening. Like, yo, you affecting, potentially affecting your future because I'm going to tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't listening to me and you're 13, 14, or 15 or younger, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's, I ain't going to stick my neck out for you. But if you're one of those kids that's out there, like, you may not agree, but if you give a full-fledged effort as a coach, that makes you feel good. Like, man, this, you know, this kid is, that's all we want as, as a coach to be like, we love those kids. They, they may be less talented, but you know that kid will run through a wall for you. Ain't nothing better than that kid that will sit there and take what you observe and use it right away and, and, and try to work with that knowledge that he just received and, work, and try to work his butt, butt off with that. That ain't nothing better than from a from a, a, a coach to see that kid like man look he's taking it taking what I what I told him and he's taking it to heart and he's just going at it he's going at it with what I just said that that coach will be a, your your biggest advocate the rest of your life that's what these kids don't understand regardless man and I understand like you could it's like say hitting right you could take ten hitting coaches they could be a major league hitting coach they could be they could be a dad they could be a a high school coach, they could be, you know, any type of coach, and they all have different opinions. They could talk about hitting, and everybody can have a different opinion and talk to that kid, that hitter, right? And it could be confusing at times, right? But what a kid needs to understand that 
it don't matter what level you on, and it could be, and it hard, it's hard, but they have to understand that the older they get, that doesn't change. When they're 13, 14, what they're being told is by one coach, when they turn 15, 16 in another program or another school or whatever, they're going to be told different things. You can't just be like, oh, because your, your butt won't see the field. you got to learn to adapt. And it's hard. I get it. It's hard. When you're being taught something, and it, even if it's working hard, but to that beholder, that coach's eye, they even taught. you got to remember, they've been taught a certain way. All right? They see the world, the, ba the game of baseball and all that in a different way. So they're going to feed what they know to you. And it's up to you to adapt. And I know it gets frustrating and hard. That's why as a youngster, when you get a hitting instructor or a pitching instructor or a good coach, you, 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 you got to, you know, try your best to kind of stay. So you start, you keep hearing the same messages, you know what I'm saying? All the time. And just, be, you know, and, and so the longer he hears that message, the more he doesn't have to keep changing from program to program, organization to organization, coach to coach. That's the hard part. Because even when they get into the college ranks and the pro ranks, they're going to hear different, you know, even between different coaches. And it's tough. But they have to learn to let, yes, yes, go try it. Give it that, that, that full effort. And then if it doesn't work for your game, especially the older you get, you start understanding, like, man, I tried this for X amount of ABs. It didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me you know, kind of go back to it. And it's hard. I understand. It's frustrating. But, again, it's about when people are making decisions on yourself, right, as far as what college or what organization you're going to play, pro-wise or whatever, you have to be coachable. You have to be able to adapt and take what people tell you. Don't take it to heart. Don't be throwing your hands up. Don't be in all upset. But you have to take what, you, what you're being taught and then implement it the best you can. Now, to the other side, coaches and for players, especially I want players to hear this. Well, understand, like, I hope when you give advice that you are qualified to do so. Okay? Uh, and I say that no disrespect, but sometimes I feel like it's hard for, it's hard for, like, an instructor myself or somebody who's been around the game 30, 30 years, right? And and I, I'm not a know-it-all. Trust me. I, I know there's a lot. I'm, I'm constantly learning this game. But what I, what I, sometimes I don't understand and it upsets me a little bit is the, you know, the fly-by-night coaches or somebody that is telling these kids and, not, and telling them wrong, all right? And you hear, they say, oh, I read, I, I, I listened to this on YouTube or I listened to this on the internet or, you know, I, 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 it's hard. And I get it. Baseball is not, you know what I'm saying? It's not a life-changing, you know, Derek, it's not a life-changing, you know what I'm saying, you know, thing, right? But I look at it like from my standpoint, right? Like, I can't go and study 10 hours of how to be a surgeon, right? I study 10 hours on YouTube how to become a surgeon, right? Here, here you come talking about, oh, I'm sick. Yo, come do surgery on me. You would look at me crazy. I'm like, I got it. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah, I, I, I study on this on YouTube. Let me get you, right? Let me cut you up. And I did it. I, I promise you. Yeah, it's Dr. Dr. Showing, showing smack over there. You know what I'm saying? Show me. What up, Luther? What up, baby? What up, girl? They show me how to do this on YouTube. Let me go ahead and try this surgery on you, right? You wouldn't do that. You look at me crazy, right? You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I see different coaches and, and, and people be over there teaching these kids or something or for they learn. Just because these guys are on the internet, on YouTube or whatever, that don't mean they, they teaching you guys right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not poo pooing. There are some really good stuff on there, but I'm just saying, understand. And I'm, you know, especially for kids, man. It, it be, it, it, be, it, you do your kid, or a, a, a coach would do that particular player a real disservice if you're not teaching him the proper way of doing things, man. You set those that kid back years. And I get it. I understand that you're trying to, you, you're actually trying to help. You're coming from a good place, but understand that everything you see and read and everything on the internet or whatever it's not it's not done correctly and sometimes with the right intentions understand that you know what i'm saying what's up jerry i i not say that and i i don't want to be disrespectful because i know when you you follow me and you're, and you're studying and youtube and everything you're coming from a good place but understand that again 
I can't study 10 hours of surgery and how to become a surgeon and y'all wouldn't trust me one damn bit with y'all kid over there if your kid got hurt and I told him, hey, I, I studied this on YouTube. Let me go ahead and work on the surgery on him. Y'all look at me crazy. I don't know what, right? But that's the same way how a baseball instructor, a baseball lifer like myself feel like, if, you know, where we got just random coaches or, 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 or you know, dads or, or just random people just coming out the woodworks and just feeling like they could just study the game for a few hours and being able to you know just jump on and and start teaching this type of stuff man and if you do i get it but just understand that the longer you teach your kid the wrong way it's the longer it takes twice as long to basically get him out of that particular those mistakes that he's making this game is a hard a hard game man a hard game to master it takes thousands and thousands of reps it takes 1200 swings at least what I learned, all right, from my hitting coaches, my professional hitting coaches, for each little mechanical flaw that you have coming around the ball or, or dipping too much or whatever, or your foot, your footwork ain't right and all of that. Each little deficiency in your swing takes 1,200 plus swings to, to correct. Think about that, man. That's thousands of swings. So if you're getting thousands of swings and being taught the wrong way, it's going to hurt you. You're, you're basically setting your kids back years, years years and again i'm not i'm not coming from a disrespectful place trust me on that i'm not i'm just trying to like you know this information out here is crazy it's a bunch of stuff out here right a bunch of information out here and just because there's a bunch of information doesn't mean it's a bunch of information that's right you know what i'm saying so just like you parents out there you coaches out there and i'm telling the players hey you know be coachable and all of that but as dads and all of them like be patient man Understand what's what's some real good stuff that you're reading and that you're teaching your kids and Understand that you know Everything you read and listen to on on, on the internet ain't gospel. Okay. I Just I'm just saying that um, I just want to kind of go on that ramp because I see it sometimes and I see these guys and they yelling from the fence and telling their kids and they're telling them the wrong stuff at times, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be like, you yelling and you teaching, and you 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 trying to make it sure he's doing things right, but in actuality, you're hurting him. Okay. So anyway, going back to the kid, that's my little rant. Going back to those kids out here, man. Understand, man, that these coaches out here, some of these coaches, and I, I I see it personally, man. Especially when you go into the professional ranks and the college, man, they can make or break your career. They can make and break, make or break your career, man. These coaches out here, man. So, again, shot smiling. Even if you don't agree, man, just go out there, try your, you know, just go ahead and just do it. It may not work for your game, but if you give a valiant effort, that coach knows. That coach is like, man, he tried. Man, he gave it. He gave me what he got. It still ain't worth whatever. Because there's no exact science, man. I can give you ten major league hitters, or, or you know, guys that I I wouldn't teach in a million years how to hit. But they make it work for themselves, right? But it has to be something in the middle where you give me that effort, you gave it a go, and it didn't necessarily work, or it ain't nothing better than you. That coach giving you a, a something, a tip. You use it, you take off. That you got a fan for life, and he will ride to he'll ride or die with you. He makes sure you get into that school. He makes sure you know what I'm saying anything anybody speak about you, bad or indifferent, whatever. He gonna stick up for you, man. Nah, he ain't that man. He, he, he's this, he, he's helping me, he's helped me do this, he's, he's hung in there for, with me, you know what I'm saying, he works hard and all of that, don't ride with you, man, you'll ride with these coaches, man, they can make a break of your careers, man, so just be players, just be very coachable, yeah, even though you disagree and all of that type of stuff, boom, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, evaluators and all of that, they know if you've been taught right, they know that, you know, you're, you're, you're as good as what you're being taught, so if you don't have the quality instructors around you and you're giving the best, you know, that you got from what you've been taught, those recruiters and those those scouts and all that, they know. They be like, oh man, you get them into our system, they'll be all right. Cause they're gonna get the proper coaching and the proper technique and all of that down. But now the basis is there, right? But you, you have to have, you know, it all goes back to attitude and stuff like that, but you have to have that great base of being coachable, all right? You could be coached into millions and millions of dollars. And you just the same way you could be coached out of millions and millions of dollars. Think about that. Okay? I want every parent on here to understand. And I know you know this, alright? Because you want to have your kids in this ball game, man. 
he potentially holding a lottery ticket, man. You know what I'm saying? Like with this, okay? You're holding a lottery, a lottery ticket, potentially. So don't let it, like, don't let, you know, it's like having to win a lottery ticket and you just letting it go to waste because your child don't want to listen. Your child got a bad attitude, man, okay? A lottery ticket, man, that's, that's tough, man. All right? Y'all putting y'all fight, you know, y'all, y'all, Y'all dollar into that, you know, whatever, mega millions and all that type of stuff, man. That's essentially what's, what's going on, man. You guys have an opportunity, all right? Anyway, that's my message, man, today, all right? Again, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Derek, I hear you, man. Hard to read these messages over there and not so then, you know, I'm driving on this highway. I wish I could read through them, but I will and respond back to them, man. I uh, I appreciate all the messages. Please keep them coming. Please share these messages. It's growing. I appreciate everyone that listens in. I appreciate everybody the comments that likes and shares. Please continue continue to do so. All right, I'll keep this knowledge going. I got something sun from Sunday on. What's up, brother? From Sunday on, man. I, you know I'm gonna have a a uh, a six part series, man, on the recruiting process. For mine, I already talked about it, but I'm gonna use this. All right, I just been asked about it a few, you know, a few too many times. So I'm gonna have a little six-part series, man. I'm gonna talk all about just different aspects of the recruiting process all next week, man. But the only, the only catch is this: I'm not gonna keep these, those messages. I'm not gonna keep those messages up on my page. You know, not more than 24, 48 hours, man, because I'm actually gonna use that in a course. Yes, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been asked, and I just know that I'm going to use this that all next week. You know, from Sunday on, I'm going to use in a course, all right, six part series. All right, I'm just going to go through the recruiting process from top to bottom. I think that'll add, you know, for people that are listening and even the, the reposting, I think they'll get a lot from that. But I'm going to take it down because I'm going to use it for the future. All right. Um, that's just a shameless plug, but that's what it is, man. So, anyway, join me tomorrow, man. Um, another topic tomorrow, but Sunday on, we're going to talk about a different series. Uh, we're going to talk about this recruiting platform, you know, top to bottom, what I would do or what you should do. And, you know, kids and parents that have uh, basically a 16 and younger kid, yes, starting Sunday, all right? Parents that are high school kid down. I will talk and go over this recruiting process from how to start to finish what I would do or what my experiences are showing me, you know, right now, starting Sunday. The reason I'm saying Sunday is because we'll give me a nice Sunday through that Saturday. All right, keep this thing going, right? And then I may have a, you know, I have some real bonus type stuff just depending on, you know, I go from there. So that's, listen, shameless plug, but tomorrow I'll be here. I'll be here tomorrow, okay? But Sunday is going to start the recruiting process okay and the stuff is that you may have heard already but a lot of stuff that again from personal experiences and stuff that you know will benefit everybody that listens in trust me okay enjoy yeah Doug, i know you talked about it man i know you got a little play out there in vegas man i'm looking at your uh, thing man so um enjoy your friday enjoy your weekend all right remember three o'clock central times man i try to be consistent with those times, I right, you see me today, I'm driving back, but I want to make sure I speak to you guys, man, say, you know, make sure you guys had a good holiday, make sure that uh, you guys, I right, ain't fighting nobody in Walmart over no, no Dawn TVs or something crazy, all right, with the Black Friday stuff, all right, enjoy yourselves, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your rest of your day, all right, say peace and love to you.